How's it going? Steve here, uh, looking at this uh, template I built um, using uh, Lemur, um, which is a control surface app that you can run on uh, iOS. Um, I think it runs on Android too. Um, but it's basically for making control surfaces, uh, which is really cool. Um, and I like a lot, um, cause I've thought about getting, uh, an actual control surface in the past. I've got some controllability. I've got a complete control, um, which is nice, but it's just got kind of rotary encoders and, um, the visual feedback on it's like, okay ish. Um, but, uh, I like this a lot better so you can really dig in there and customize stuff. Um, so I'll show you a couple of things that are cool about this. Uh, the reason I built this, uh, or at least the, um, driving force for this. Um, so I got this Babylon waves, um, our conductor articulation set stuff. Um, because I really hate key switches. I don't think there's really any composers out there that like key switches at all. Um, so, uh, I built this basically with that in mind. Um, and you can see down here to the left, I've got all my key switches. Um, and if you're using this, one of the useful things in logic is you can open a key switch panel. Um, it's in the smart controls and it's in the middle there. And basically it'll update kind of, <laughs> Um, it'll update depending, oh man, they don't have that really. <laughs> There's no, uh, I don't remember what it's called. It's the link thing. You could do it with your contact libraries. You can just click this link guy up here and it'll actually load up each contact instrument as you select the track. Sort of bizarre that they kind of didn't do that. Whatever. Um, so anyway, unless I'm missing that and then that would be funny and then I'd look like a dumb dumb. But, um, anyway, um, so you can look at these key switches in here. And the good news is most of these are kind of, um, standardized sort of, um, across most of the instruments, like the longs are down at the bottom here and your spiccato and staccatos are somewhere around E and F2, um, or well, minus two, but, um, basically, uh, you know, it's, it's designed to hopefully make it a lot easier as opposed to like, um, trying to remember where each key switch is cause they're not particularly standardized. I think Spitfire, um, tried to kind of do some of that with, um, the UACC stuff. Um, but, uh, to me, this works a little bit better. One gripe, um, and <laughs> sincerely doubt, um, Apple will ever see this video, but, um, the one gripe I have is we've got all this key switch info here. Um, and it's obviously taking the strings and populating them to the keynotes themselves. Um, but there's no OSC message, um, going from these key switches out <laughs> to the world that you can reroute. Um, uh, if you're not familiar with OSC, uh, I believe it stands for open sound control. Um, basically what it is, um, if you look at this here, um, it's a way for um, software to communicate with, um, other software or hardware, um, and, uh, kind of, um, you know, update parameters, um, based on what's happening in the DAW. And I'll give you an example. Uh, a couple of these are routed. Oops. A couple of these are routed. A couple of these are routed. <laughs> Uh, a couple of them are, um, but that's all right. Um, sorry, I was trying to 
organize it by event type. Apparently I can't do that. Um, but that's okay. So if you look at the center screen here, um, you can see that as I change tracks, the track name changes. That's all OSC data. It's sending this track name um, out as uh, logic track name. And it's like URLs, like on a website. Uh, it's exactly like that, actually. Um, and yeah, here we go. So here's my, um, those are sends. Where's my track? That's the track level. There's track name. Okay. So here's the track name string. And um, it's going out to this address. By the way, um, the lemur device itself, uh, as far as I could see, isn't recognized by Bonjour, um, which takes these IP addresses and makes them into something that's not just a string of numbers. It usually makes it into something like SW Mac or some of these other local hosts kind of um, addresses, I think. Um, I think that's how it works. But yeah, that took a minute to <laughs> figure out. Um, you kind of have to double click in here to set it up. There's no like create new target. Um, <laughs> so you kind of have to fiddle around a bit and make sure that um, you set that up correctly. Um, so anyway, um, these are going to specific addresses in Lemur um, called OSC addresses. Um, and in this case, I'm just using like this is my track name stuff here. Um, just using a really basic expression. It's barely a script, really. It's like a function um, that uh, sets this attribute that um, gets whatever object it's in, which is track name, because it's right above um, in that hierarchy. And then sets the content, which is um, you know whatever the text label that appears here is as whatever's coming in on the OSC um, argument for this on execution. So um, there you go. Um, if uh, it didn't follow that, it's okay. Um, it's mostly um, you know, mostly helpful um, for me to kind of just put that together in my head because it took a long time. It took like a week to figure all this out. So, um, anyway, um, other things, um, about this template. That's nice. If you can see now that I'm playing back, um, the SMTP, <laughs> SMPT, SMPTE, there we go. Um, time code is playing back on the top and then the bars and beats is, um, down in the middle there in green. Um, and that's, again, more OSC data. And it's going through this osculator program, uh, which I highly recommend. It's pretty much the only thing out there that I've gotten to make work with the OSC messages. Logic kind of has some of that stuff built in, but the documentation is um, pretty sparse as far as I can find. Um, and in fact, I will say the documentation for most of this stuff is unfortunately very sparse. Um, I think I was late to the party on Lemur. Um, it's like it's it's been around since I think like 2012 or even before then. Um, and uh, has kind of since sort of dropped off the face of the earth. I mean, the, the website's still there. You can still find videos. You can find um, the manual and stuff like that. But the forums are pretty dead. Um, you get the occasional post here and there, uh, rather unfortunate. It seems like a really, really great program. Um, I am so far quite enjoying it. Um, there's definitely, um, definitely a learning curve. Uh, like I said, it took me a week to figure most of it out. The MIDI stuff is pretty easy, but, um, figuring out the, the OSC stuff and how all the switches kind of function and how to set that up. And interface it with the um, with the DAW with Logic um, 
took a minute. Um, I won't say it was like particularly, uh, you know, um, just like super obtuse, but like, uh, you know, you just find things like, Oh, why, <laughs> why didn't I see that before? Um, kind of deals. So, um, basically, yeah, again, got my key switches. Wow. <laughs> it was a uh, super loud. I forgot I was on my synth stack there. Um, so I've got all my key switches down there and, uh, basically, um, you know, you switch key switches just by pushing the key switch, which is super cool. Um, it's a lot easier than like going over here and hitting the octave button down and hoping that, um, I count the octaves correctly as I'm pushing the octave button down. Um, it's, it's a lot easier to just go and push it. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I think that's going to be a big help. And, uh, while I was there, I was like, well, you know, all this stuff is basically just printing MIDI data to stuff. Um, so some other cool tricks, um, that you can do. I've got a mod slider set up here. So like, which is cool. And I'm not sure I've totally decided on the, um, length of that fader yet. Um, so it's definitely cool to have a, a longer fader. I feel like, um, I once had a, uh, Korg nano control that was fairly, um, it was cool for what it did, but the faders are tiny on that thing. Um, it doesn't really, it was like, push it up a centimeter and you're in a totally different dynamic. Um, so trying to find a balance between that, I might bring these up a little bit and then put some other stuff in the bottom where that was at. Um, other cool stuff. Um, you basically show and hide groups, which is pretty useful. Um, if you don't know how to do that, um, oops. I don't think that should all be grouped, should it? Mm, maybe it should. At one point, I just had the track stacks group. So anyway, you go to the group settings here. Um, basically, everything is off. Um, you can set this differently if you want. I just don't want to edit stuff or um, you know have all my volume moving in the same direction. If I wanted to, I'd just go and turn it on in here, but... I uh, can't foresee, um, a situation where I would need that. Um, but then again, never say never. So, uh, uh what else? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. So you can hide groups, show groups, which is pretty cool. Um, these buttons actually, um, have an on and off state. So it'll say like show strings, hide strings, which is neat. Um, that functionality is kind of built into lemur. Um, oh, these are fun. These X, Y pads. Uh, I have this set up to mob wheel and vibrato. Um, let's pull this up. Basically just, uh, so you can do really cool stuff like that. It's a lot easier than the, like, try to fiddle around with like two knobs. You could try and record it at the same time, like while you're playing it. It's pretty cool. Um, other things that I put in there, stuff like making markers. It's pretty, it help if I had the global track open. Oh no. <laughs> Did my make marker assignment get deleted? Marker. So this is how you assign stuff, by the way, is um, just Alt-K, the key commands. You just click learn new assignment, and then it makes a marker. Um, actually, I really don't want it to be rounded. Okay. Yeah, if you round it, it'll put it to the closest, like... Um, 
grid setting, I think. Um, so, all right, so now we can just make some markers, which is sweet. Fast forward a bit, make some more markers. And then you could previous marker, next marker, and that works pretty well. Um, if you want, you could cycle a marker. Oh, whoops, it got selected. Let's see if this actually, there we go. <laughs> it helps if you don't have it selected. Um, so otherwise it will default to that. Okay. Um, so that's most of the front page and this is just a transport, you know, play, record, cycle, all that fun stuff. Uh, pretty much the, one of the reasons I've been wanting to set this up is, um, Zebra, um, which if you don't have Zebra is a really cool synth. Um, this is the HZ on Zimmer version of Zebra, which I quite like a lot. Um, so I quite like Hans Zimmer's music and, uh, there's a lot of really nice, uh, functionality to it. Um, and you have four different oscillators, this multi-segment envelope thing is, uh, quite, quite good. Um, or rather multi-stage envelope generator. Um, the filters are really cool. It's, uh, I think basically a modular synth. Um, yeah. So you can pretty much route anything to anything else and pan it all sorts of places. Uh, I know a tiny, tiny bit, um, with Zebra, I mostly tweak presets, if I'm being honest, um, with this particular synth. Some other synths, is a little more straightforward, but uh, this one definitely, there's a lot. <laughs> a lot there. Um, so anyhow, um, this is um, uh, a preset bundle I just got, actually, um, from Jonathan Sharp at uh, Hartwood Soundware. Um, and, uh, he makes some great, uh, great presets for all kinds of synths. Um, you know, they're definitely right up there with uh, a lot of the other presets I have from guys like Unfinished and Plugin Guru and, um, Love Drum is another one that's really great. Um, so let's take a look at some of these. It's a really long release. Let's see. Yeah, I like his drones a lot, I gotta say. I feel like um, Jonathan's got a real um, knack for drones. Um, so, that's just my opinion. Um, what's cool about Zebra is it has these four x y pads set up um and uh what i like is uh with the hardwood soundware stuff um uh, pretty much all of these x y's are always assigned um and if you're wondering how to assign these by the way um, you have to go to the x y panel and assign each one of these um it's actually a bit easier if you go in here to the MIDI table and assign them this way. Um, but what you can do and you know that Less of that, <laughs> less of that tail, so I could talk over it. Um, you know that um, in and of itself is uh, just a whole lot of possibility with sounds. Oh, I put a mod wheel here, so you always need a mod wheel. So you basically have five different controls with the synth that are actually controlling more like nine different parameters at least, depending on. Um, what's been assigned to each X and Y, and there's actually multiple things 
um, assigned to each X and Y. As you can see, this um, filter here, the drive and the pre-tilt. Um, and this one has drive and post-tilt on the other one. Um, super cool. Really looking forward to that. Um, I've got a serum tab because occasionally I'll use serum. Um, I haven't been as much lately um, just because I've been kind of in Omnisphere and Diva and UE land. But Serum is a fantastic synth as well. It's just not like, you know, one is particularly um, greater than the other. Um, there's some real, real neat tricks with this one um, as well. But uh, basically, I just have these set up to the macro knobs. Um, if you're unaware, because <laughs> I was, um, you need to save your MIDI map um, to make sure that uh, these MIDI controls that you assign, which you just do a MIDI learn with a right click and then move the fader and then assign it. Um, you need to save the MIDI table um, or the MIDI map in this case, I guess they call that. Um, save it as default, default.mmp. And um, that will pull that up every time you pull up Serum and you won't lose your MIDI assignments between um, patches. All right. Um, so just a little tip if you decide to um, go down this route. And this was something I've been um, working on a little bit too, which is just kind of a, a single channel um, control strip for automation. And again, um, there's OSC data for, you can see the yellow number there moving as I move the uh, volume fader. Um, that's just OSC data. I haven't figured out how to append just a stupid little um, DB <laughs> to the end of that, um, which kind of bugs me. Um, it shouldn't because I mean, it's, it's, I know it's um, DBFS, um, but it's, uh, yeah. It's still kind of annoying. <laughs> um, but uh, other things, um, you can do this with sends as well. So, I mean, um, you know, depending on what I wanted to do, um, I could just basically, you know, record a bunch of automation data, you know, soloing, muting, all that stuff works. Of course, if you keep it in read mode, it doesn't work. So let's put it in latch mode, <laughs> which I've got all these um, automation modes set up down here. We And hopefully that actually, yeah, wrote that time. Sweet. Um, I should probably put pan in there too. All right, I'll have to do that after the video's over. I forgot about pan. Hmm. Um, yeah, and then it's got a little transport and then you could solo all or break the solo of all or mute everything. Um, or well, it doesn't really mute everything. It takes mute off of everything. Um, and then latch, touch, read, trim, and then read all just to kind of cancel out everything. Um, and then you can snap automation. Um, as well, um, the sends up here are populated. You can name the um, the buses, by the way, so it's not just like bus eight, which doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, if you go in here, you go to IO labels. Um, there we go, bus eight, which I would typically. <laughs> have my reverb on bus one. It's got to take some getting used to, um, getting used to this, but it's occupied by the, um, track stacks. When you make a summing stack like this, um, it basically, uh, puts it all on a bus. So by not creating the reverb bus first, it is occupied, um, bus one with, uh, with my strings here. Um, there's probably a way to move that around. Um, but I think I'm just going to get used to 
reverb being on bus eight, honestly. It's not that big of a a mental um jump. And for some reason I have FX remix effects on the uh stereo out there. Okay. Um that may or it may not be all I want to say. Um but yeah. Um I kind of just wanted to show this off. Uh took me about a week to put this all together. Um looking at an active plug-in thing, that's probably gonna be a super pain to actually program. Um, but for now, I think this is a good um, stopping point. Of course, after I add that pan to the um, channel strip thing there. But uh, anyhow, I don't know. Uh, if you have thoughts, things that I missed, um, things you'd like to see on this, um, let me know. Um, and I might make another video on it. Um, Lemur's cool. Uh, <laughs> The documentation for this stuff is uh, fairly limited. The lemur manual is good, by the way, um, for the most part. I would like some more examples on some of the stuff. Like, it's it's very um, definition-based, and there are some examples, but it would be really super helpful to have um, more examples for those of us that are uh, maybe not quite as... Um, experienced programming. I am very much a, uh, <laughs> a very, very, uh, beginner programmer. I've like just started to get into, um, scripting contact instruments and stuff like that. And like, you know, doing a little bit of WordPress CSS kind of stuff, but nothing, nothing particularly, um, that I would call like hardcore programming. I've got a couple friends and family that are, um, definitely <laughs> a lot more, um, experienced and such. Uh, you know, it's like their job. So anyhow, uh, I think I'm going to stop it there cause I'm kind of just rambling at this point, but, um, you know, hopefully it was enjoyable. Um, let me know what you think. And, uh, if you decide to go down this route, um, and we want to discuss, um, hit me up. All right, see ya.